In today's video, I am going to be breaking down the five out offense and why I personally believe that this is the ultimate basketball offense that you could run at the youth level. Now, number one is the five out offense is super easy to teach. There is basic plays that can be ran out of it and you can even scale up. So if you coach a team for, let's say five or six years from like, let's say grade seven or eight, all the way up to grade 12, then you could literally continue to add plays and scale up while they get older. And you could literally start with a simple three to five set play basically list and then by the time they're in grade 12, you could scale up to having 20, 30, 40 different plays and they'll be able to remember them because they're super easy. Plus the five out offense can be ran against a zone as well as a man to man defense. So let's get down to check out a couple of simple plays and how you can actually scale these up. Really quickly, if you want the complete guide to the five out basketball offense, check out the link down in the description below. So you can have a simple pass and cut play and that basically can be ran with any age. And then one player, one cuts, player two fills the top, player five then fills the point. These defenders would then cycle through and if player one wasn't open to receive that pass for the layup, then he would just fill out to the opposite side. And this works extremely well for younger players. And it can even work against a zone. For example, against a 2-3 zone, this will most likely, in most cases, be a trap up top players, 4 and 3 will then move up slightly, and at that point, when player 2 makes that pass, when he cuts to the rim, what we want to see is for him to post up in the paint, because now, if we can get that entry pass into the paint, this generally collapses most defenses and when that happens, we can have, of course, player two looking to kick it out for threes or looking at the opposite side players who can then find openings to cut down depending on what these defenders are doing because now we need to teach our team how to run off ball and move off ball to find openings to cut to the basket for easy layups. So now we're teaching basic movements. You need to pass and you need to do something after the pass. So you pass and cut. And now obviously post up to understand how to beat a zone, but also how to move off ball and how to find openings to be able to get that ball into basically an easy layup situation. This is why I personally love the five out offense. Don't get me wrong, I, I also love the triangle offense, but with the five out, we can really teach a lot of basics when it comes to basketball. And if player two never got that ball, we would just cycle player five up, player one out, and player two out, and now we are still in our five out offense. We can still continue to run plays. Now, going back to a man-to-man -man defense, there's other basic options that you can run out of the five out, which is a pass and screen away or a pass and screen for the player that you passed to. As an example, if player three makes a pass to player five, we can say, okay, well, screen for the player you passed to, or you can screen away for the player that you didn't pass to. This opens up multiple different options, but let's say as an example, we run a pass and screen away. This now can teach our players how to screen and roll, but also how to use screens. Again, very important because now we can give the options to our players as to what to do. We want our players to think for themselves. This is the whole main goal of coaching. We want our players to think for themselves. So we can have player three set that screen away. And if player four goes underneath that screen, player four can then pop and he will be open or she will be open for a three point shot. Because of that separation, that should be a clean shot to make. However, if player four uses that screen and player four red goes over top of the screen, we need player four blue to make contact or at least keep player four 
the defender behind him or her because then we can have that player cut to the basket and by keeping that player behind them when they're going over top of the screen this will give them basically an open lane to the basket for a pass and of course a layup this is extremely important because now we've taught our players how to read a defender and what to do to pop or to cut to the rim after the screen however there's still one more option and that is if player four pops up and tries to deny the screen to try to cut off the path of player four so that he can't use the screen in which case player four blue should be then cutting back towards the baseline back towards the basket because now player three is setting the screen here he just has to turn and set that screen for player four, in which case now player four blue has that open layup. We're now teaching how to use screens. And if we run drills to be able to teach our team how to use screens, which I'm gonna show you in a bit, but also now we can teach our defenders how to play a screen. Do you feel comfortable cutting off that screen and jamming it? Do you feel comfortable going underneath the screen because maybe this guy can't shoot threes? Do you feel comfortable going over top of a screen because this guy isn't very big and maybe you can switch off or the def defense will switch off and at that case, we may have an open screen and pop for a three. And especially if he hedges, we may have an open three in the corner. So now we're teaching our team how to defend a screen, how to use a screen, and how to set screens. And being able to learn how to use screens is super important. I understand in Europe, you guys don't usually set screens or not allowed to set screens until they get to like the high school level. However, over in North America, where most of my views come from, the they're allowed to set screens all the way from like six-year-olds in most leagues so basically this is a very important skill to have especially when they start getting to the next level whether it be high school college university pros whatever it may be they will then understand from a very young age how to use screens how to defend screens and of course how to screen so this is basically a drill that I actually literally ran this morning with the team that I coach, the two teams I coach. We're going to have an offensive line here, an offensive line here, and a defensive line here. And we're going to have the first player in line. We're going to have a pass when the coach says go, pass to player two. We're going to have try, try to have player five red, try to pick off that pass, deny it, whatever it may be, and then have player five blue set that screen for player five or player two blue on player five red. And then we're going to tell our defender, you make the decision yourself. Are you going to jam that screen and basically deny it? Are you going to go underneath the screen or are you going to go over top of the screen as a defender? Because then we can have our players think for themselves. Player two goes over top of the screen let's say player five goes over top as well well now player two attacks the rim with player five red on his on his hip player five blue pops out because if we have a cut to the basket player five needs to screen and pop and then if that kit that happens we have the kick out for a three because of course there's no defense if however player two makes that pass and sets that screen and now player five uses that screen and player five goes over or goes underneath the screen now we want to see player two roll towards the basket because now player five could take that shot if player five red is trying to recover it could be a pass in for a layup or we could have player two set that screen and then seal player five when he's trying to go underneath the screen and then we can have player five take that shot or if that was a very strong seal, we can have that pass into player two for the reverse layup. And then if you want to take it at one step further, we can then explain to our team, well, we want this pass to player five, but if player five red overplays and makes a mistake and doesn't intercept that pass, we want player five to attack the basket as fast as possible to get that layup. If that's a mistake by player five red, the player who, got, who has the ball needs to, of course, capitalize on that mistake. So this is why I personally really love running the five out offense. It's simple to run, you can scale it up. Just like any offense, you can scale up as well. However, with the five out, it's it gives you so many different options against different zones and against different man-to-man -man types of defenses. Of course, there's the switch everything man and so many other different types. There's 
Many coaches have different options when it comes to the man-to-man, so I'm not going to get into each and every single one of them. However, when it comes to the five out, it just seems like it's an easy play to run or an easy set of plays to run. And you can run it against a man in a zone, and it teaches you how to spread the floor, how to run off ball and move off ball, and it also teaches you how to use and defend a screen and roll. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. Make sure to go check out my complete guide to the five out offense down in the description below and I'll see you guys again next time.